on 95.3 FM in Window Desert Radio. The Bold Boy. That's right. The time on the clock is 7.31 and you are still tuned in to Breakfast in the Desert here on Desert Radio 95.3 FM. Uh, you are still in the company of myself, Arlana, and uh, John Colin. And, uh, Not the amazing. <laughs> okay. Must you call me out All when right, I don't say Alana. you're amazing, John That's Cullen? Fine. But you know you're amazing, so I don't have to keep reminding you, right? Okay, my smile is back. But okay, fine. <laughs> I guess every once in a while we all need the reassurance with go. the amazing John <laughs> Cullen. And uh, <laughs> we also have Bank Vintook's Executive Officer for Marketing and uh, Corporate Communication Services, that is Jacqueline Pack, in our company. And uh, we're going to take some time this morning to get to know Jacqueline a little bit. Uh, uh, I mean, we see your name in newspapers and headlines and mm. things like that, but we want to know who the person behind the name is. Good morning, Jackie. How are you? Good morning. Good morning, um, listeners. Uh, thank you for having me in studio this morning. How are you doing? How are you bearing the cold? <laughs> I'm doing well. Um, I must say I'm not a winter person, so I'm struggling a bit, mm-hmm. but um, so far so good. How many weeks more to go? Yeah. <laughs> I'm well, not a too good sure, month and a half to uh, go. Yeah, yeah. A few more. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what, Jacqueline, brace the call to be yeah. in our company this morning, and we're so excited to have you. Thank and you. Um, I think just to start off, what I really love, you know, asking people when they're in our company is just your origin story. Who yes. are you? Where are you from? Just tell us a bit about yourself. All right. Thank you very much. So um, I grew up in a small town, a small town called Ocho. Mm. I don't know if you guys know Ocho. Yes. Definitely. <laughs> And obviously, similar story to most of us, I uh, grew up with my grandmother, mm. a big house uh, full of children. Um, and those were the best um, memories of my childhood uh, because my grandmother was an extraordinary woman. Um, she had uh, two disabled children as well. Mm. So we uh, were brought up in this um, diverse type of environment, mm. embracing anything that comes your way. Mm. Um, her house was also open. She um, fed people in the communities, you know. Um, people just rock up at your house and then, <laughs> yeah. you know, uh, this, there was this particular uh, disabled lady, um, I forgot her name now, um, and she used to get special treatment from my grandmother. Mm. And if you say anything to disturb her, then you're in big trouble with Uh-oh. my grandmother. <laughs> so uh, similarly to most of us also, you know, um, two bowls. One for the b- girls and one for mm. the boys. Mm. Um, and you need to run to make sure that you <laughs> get your <laughs> portions. <laughs> but those are, you know, and uh, thinking back, those are the things that really shaped um, your character mm. as, as, as you grow up, you realize that. Mm. And um, she was um, one of those people that really impacted my life mm. greatly. Um, today she was, um, I mean, she, we lost her in the early 2000s mm-hmm. um, and remarkable, she woke up. It's not your particular people, someone is sick and then, you know, mm-hmm. you, you, she dies. She uh, woke up, cleaned her house, sent the kids for bread. Mm-hmm. She sat in her chair and there she was gone. Wow. I swear I've never, you know, come up with someone that just went so peacefully. Mm. So, and I think that is just a reflection of her character and who she was. Mm. The town even has uh, named her, um, there's a street named oh, after wow. her oh, wow. because of the work that she does yeah. and did in the communities, etc. Yeah. So that is my grandmother. And then uh, my primary school was, um, I was in Chumip. Um, um for for most of my primary school, um, for about ten years, mm. um, we lived in Chumip actually, and then um, started a primary school at five. I don't know why I was so eager to go to school, <laughs> but yeah. So um, what I appreciate about um, those years in Chumip is that I was able to um, be um, take my language Oshirero. Mm. Um, at school Mm. so and today I can write it I can read it help myself Mm. 
and obviously I can speak it. So um, I don't think if I was in school here in Vantuk, I would have had that opportunity. Mm. So that is something that I cherish. Yeah, really, I'm jealous. Really? <laughs> yeah, 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 honestly. Oh, my I goodness. I, yeah. I mean, how many of us actually had that opportunity? Mm. Yeah. So that was great. And high school here in Vantuk, um, two years at Concordia and then the rest at VIS. Mm. I wasn't particularly your, um, you know, A plus student. Mm. I really had to study very hard. Um, average, I think. I managed to get a matric exemption at the time so that you are able to go to university. Mm. Mm. But um, I was unable to get into university just because of um, lack of funds mm. and so on. My parents probably didn't plan, um, yeah. you know, properly. And um, so, and we were a lot of children as well. I mean, I'm one of eight, so you can imagine. Mm. <laughs> so um, I decided to do distance learning um, and then um, through UNISA. Mm. So I completed my degree um, marketing as well as my postgrad. Mm. Um, so, yeah. That's basically in a nutshell. I'm married. I have three children, two boys and a girl. Mm. And it's actually my daughter's birthday today. Oh, wow. Oh, <laughs> happy birthday, birthday to her. Yes. Happy How birthday. old is she? She's now turning 15 today. Oh, wow. Okay, wow. <laughs> well, happy birthday to her. Yes. And have happy birth giving day to you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank and you um, so I much. hope that you have time to celebrate and, uh, you know, spend time with her today. No, definitely. Okay. I will. And, and, I will. and Jackie? I'm, I'm interested. I mean, I know for for instance, um, with me, I grew up with my grand as well, yeah. and there's certain beliefs and principles that yes. uh, I've seen um, reflecting now yeah. um, from you know um, growing up with that my grand that yeah. that that I have. Um, yeah. So perhaps from your side, um, what are those beliefs that you have right now still mm. um, that you've used in your life? Yeah. Principles as well as you've used in your life yeah. uh, that do emanate from your childhood um, yeah. and brought you to where you are now. Yeah. I think it's respecting um, each and every person, regardless of who they are, what title they hold. Mm. Um, and then secondly, it's um, empathy. Um, I believe that through that experience, I really got to emphasize or emp have empathy mm. towards, um, you know, people in life, mm. regardless. And then I think also uh, um, that level of um, resilience mm. that I have now, because you really need to be very tough in the corporate environment. Yes. Yeah. Um, it's not easy. You need to hold out. And I think those are some of the things that she installed in me um, growing up. Mm. That's mm. beautiful. And, uh, you know, on that note of yeah. being a woman, especially in yeah. corporate, right? Yes. Um, there are so many hurdles and challenges that you mm. face it and that you have to overcome mm. um, to be able to break these glass ceilings in yeah. a very male-dominated <coughs> industry. Yeah. Um, so just talk to us about, you know, um, some of those challenges that you faced and mm. how you've overcome them yeah. uh, to get to where you are now. Yeah. I must say that um, if it wasn't for prayers and God, I would not at all have made it. Mm. So um, I've got a, a set schedule where I just start the day with, um, you know, reading the Bible and just setting the scene for my day. Mm. Um, and I think also um, a lot of the stuff that have sh shaped me and made me who I am, you know, growing up and knowing different cultures, etc., yeah. um, has also um, instilled in me the sense of um, understanding people's perspectives, mm -hmm. you know. So um, I grew up a certain way. Others have grew, um, have had different life stories mm -hmm. and... Um, you know, whether they embrace um, women or whether they embrace um, racial differences, you know, you cannot um, at all control that because yeah. that's someone's reference point. That's how they grew up. Yeah. So I think um, to be um, self-aware about who you are and knowing that that person also comes from a different background has definitely um, assisted me to deal with those um, unfortunate incidents mm. or, you know, uncomfortable situations. And um, I think 
I'm very lucky in a sense also talking about God that I'm always in a position where I have people that just draw to me or that I can converse in. Mm. So um, even in my role now, I've got two special colleagues. Um, the one is uh, James Chapman and then Lucas Nanyemba. I think they just sort of carried me. Mm. And you can't really, um, you know, I guess entering the corporate world, you kind of need that person that you can just bounce back and, um, you know, talk to because they will bring you back into frame mm. because you are so sometimes it's so emotional some of the things that you deal with yeah but if you got people that you can really talk to mm. and obviously my husband i mean he um gets tired but mm. um he just has to listen mm. and um give his advice as well mm. he must just be strong <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes absolutely yeah. and you know um i'm curious right um yeah. you said you studied marketing yes um so of all the options that you had you yes. know marketing you can go into so many different yeah. industries why did you choose banking to be quite honest um in high school, I had art okay. um, and I realized that I have a love for art. So, mm. and um, you go to these ladies that help you frame, you know, what are you going to, what, what are you good at? Yeah. And I think marketing was kind of the option that I had to take because I don't think my parents would have allowed me to go like into Like most art. of our parents, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> so um, I went for it. I loved it. Mm. Um, love at first sight. And um, I think my experience at breweries, because I was there for five years, mm. and I really got an opportunity to... Um, even do um, in-house training mm. on brand building, et cetera. Yeah. And I think that just with the studies of UNISA, that just elevated my love for the, for marketing. Mm. And um, the exposure there, I mean, if uh, you really want to get exposure in marketing, o and or breweries was the place. Yeah. I think I was lucky enough. And I didn't even want to apply for the position. I think the the closing date was like today. Mm. And my husband was literally not speaking to me. So <laughs> I submitted it. And then two days later, I got mm. a call. I'm like, oh, my gosh. Oh, really? Mm. So um, that was the most exciting um, thing um, that I ever went through. That was the NBL experience. Mm. And I worked on the international brands. I I did shows P Square. And wow. I remember when I left, I just um, planned Boys to Men, then I had to join the bank. Mm. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it was about five years of experience, and I was maybe becoming a bit tired mm. because that's FMCG environment, and I, and I wanted to experience something different. Mm. So I applied for the role, and I got it, and here I am. The rest is history. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and and then just on that, what 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 advice would you give to a young girl, a young mm. boy who has perhaps looked at your journey, mm. um, especially making it to where you are now? Uh, what advice would you give to them yeah. to you know sort of um, be strong, be resilient, like yeah. you said, in you know the challenges that uh, we face, especially mm. as young people yeah. in the country trying to make it um, yeah. to corporate, which yeah. is like you said, a rough environment sometimes. Yes, yes. I think one must realize that you need to start small. Um, I mean, I, as a brand manager, I used to put up posters in the shopins. Mm organize activations, run around and look at pricing, etc. So really did everything by yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and you learned, um, you know, the value chain of marketing through that. So I think my advice would be to do not be scared to start from scratch or wherever you get an opportunity because mm -hmm. opportunities are scarce. Mm -hmm. But I want to remind them that um, according to the World Economic Survey on, you know, the top jobs, mm. marketing is probably number four, if I'm not mistaken. So it's in the top five. Mm. And looking at 4IR and digital transformation, it's definitely um, the best career that you can consider. Um, even if you look at board um, advertising um, 
most recently since last year, I think. Mm. They are looking for people with marketing and comms experience because it has become such a critical skill. Mm. So they should just push and try and get a mentor as well. It helps um, through your journey when you start off. Mm. You need to, to really have a mentor, I think, um, to help you shape your journey mm. um yeah and uh jackie you know you speak about your work and your life <laughs> with so much like positivity mm. yes. enthusiasm and passion <laughs> mm. and uh, you yeah. said you start your day off you know by praying yeah. um so i'm just curious to know like what inspires you to keep such a a bubbly optimism to life especially in a world that is seemingly so dark there's yeah. so yes. much going on <laughs> yes Man, I think it's my team mm. um, at Bank Ventuk. A shout out to them. We are about 28. Mm -hmm. And I will quickly name them. <laughs> I hope I don't forget <laughs> anybody. Mm -hmm. Marissa, Melissa, um, Rochelle, Bronwyn, Hayley, Carmen, Anton, Renier, Carlos, Very, Suzette. Sammy, who's sitting outside, mm -hmm. um, Ongame, um, Veno, Malulu, um, Josie, Gayton. I'm now naming them as they sit, otherwise mm -hmm. I'm going to get in trouble. <laughs> um, Aina, Otile, Liesl, and the, we have an in-house creative mm. agency and they just are so crazy, but <laughs> <laughs> they are so good at what they do. Mm -hmm. Headed uh, um, by Nyasha. Trisha, Nehale, um, Lahano, Whitney, and Rusa. Mm. Mm. Lastly, so those are the people that make um, marketing at Bank Ventuk flourish. Mm. And I cannot do this without them. Mm. They make the work environment also quite conducive mm. in the sense of, you know, we do work hard, but we also play hard. Mm. And yeah, that is, that is really, it. really. And I'm just leading them, um, giving strategic direction, but mm. they are amazing. They are specialists in their fields. Mm. And um, yeah. Great Honestly, team. I am smiling so big under my mask right now. You can't see this because imagine your boss sitting on radio naming you person imagine. by person to say shout out to my no, team. You guys it. are doing yes. such an amazing job. I love that. That I is it, that is it, that is it. quite something. Yeah. And and Jackie, what would you say? I mean, look, um, of course you, you you've been in in marketing for quite a while, yeah. and I think you uh, have been fortunate enough to you know sort of experience the traditional means of marketing and yeah. then uh, be introduced to, you know, this explosion that is social media, right? Yes. Um, how has that sort of impacted uh, the way you do marketing, the way you see marketing communications yeah. and, um, you know, just helped you, um, yeah. you know, come to where you are now? Yeah. Um, I actually did a thought leadership on social media article, I think last year, was it this year? I can't remember. Mm. Um, but the it it is something that has exploded and um, we need to keep abreast um, with a lot of things happening in digital marketing mm. space. Um, social media is a channel that's open and people can say and do what they want. Mm -hmm. um, and that has also posed quite a lot of risks in my area where I need to do a lot of crisis yeah, <laughs> communication um, and manage, you know, narrative online, etc. Mm. Obviously with a very um, competent team, but it is. It, it has its challenges and it has its um, sort of opportunities. So we try and, um, you know, leverage off the opportunities from a brand perspective, you know. Mm. Um, we are on Facebook, on Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, um, Twitter, etc. We haven't touched TikTok. <laughs> um, maybe it's coming, I'm not sure. But mm -hmm. um it, it's an avenue to communicate to our clients and we need to embrace it. Um, and it helps us also uh, manage perception around the brand. Mm. But there's also that other side, um, you know, of, um, you know, trying to engage with people that might not have factual yeah. information. 
that are frustrated, you know, um, with service delivery, et cetera, mm -hmm. that we need to manage. And through, and what we have done is we've put together a playbook where we just kind of um, put the different scenarios together mm -hmm. and frame statements that we can just draw on when we need to. Mm. Because it's so fast paced, no, it's on yeah, the yeah. go, you don't have time to think and you need to do the right thing. Mm. So, yeah. And how do you keep abreast of that? Because I can imagine, as you said, it's mm. so fa fast paced, mm. it's constant. And um, I've noticed, especially on the Twitter platform, that, you know, when someone says anything about <coughs> Bank Ventuk, <coughs> Bank Ventuk is right there to respond, yeah. right? So, yeah. how does your team keep abreast of those things? And yeah. is it not tiring? <laughs> it's extremely tiring. And um, a social media community management has exploded mm. over the past two years mm. um, in a sense that you almost feel that they don't have a weekend. Yeah. You know, um, but it's part of the job now. Yeah. And, and that's the change that we needed to embrace mm. as a division, as a department, as a brand even. Mm that you've got to be online, unfortunately, no. all the time yeah. um, to to deal with these um, inquiries or complaints, whatever you call it, um, comments from the public. But I think through time and experience, you build trends in terms of the narrative mm. and you can always draw on them. Obviously, there are special new cases um, and um, we built our risk playbook <laughs> That's what we call it. <laughs> With all these scenarios. And I think um, about a month ago, we actually did a simulation, mm. which is you uh, predict something happening in the bank. And then you you actually, uh, as a project, you need to now figure out from a comms perspective what you're going to do until the um, there's a solution mm. or the, uh, the matter is under control. Um, and those type of experiences also teaches you, you know, and gives you insights um, when you actually have a certain um, scenario or, or, or something happen mm. in the bank that you can draw from those learnings mm. um, through that. So it's just basically um, something that is invented. It's not real, but you go through the motions. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's quite interesting. I think yeah. that's smart also to it always is. be ready, eh? Yeah. Yes. It's extremely smart. Yes. Um, Jacqueline, you mentioned something that uh, I find quite interesting. You said it's almost as if, you know, some um, some, some of the people in your de uh, division don't have a weekend, right? Yes. From your side, um, when you're not busy, you know, being a marketing and corporating exec, when you're not busy being a mom or a wife, uh, yeah. for you to just calm down and have that peace of mind mm. and to relax... What is it that you get up to? Okay. So um, I watch TV. Mm. Um, there's a, a program um, called Naked and Afraid. People mm. always think naked. <laughs> yeah, but what they one. do is they place two people for like 21 days in the desert without anything and you need to survive. Mm. Yeah. And for me, it's just fascinating watching how people actually do survive or crack within four or five days yeah. because your mind starts playing with you. Yeah. And just the fact that you can actually survive with bare minimum, I find that quite fascinating. Mm. So I love that. I actually also read um, books, um, spiritual and leadership books mostly. Mm -hmm. And then I cook also. Um, sometimes I get tired of cooking, <laughs> but I do cook. <laughs> and um, I try and make it fun for myself. Mm -hmm. And then... Um, Painting, but occasionally, mm. I must say. And then farming, because we are part-time farm farmers, so uh, between the animals, etc. Mm. So that's how I switch off. Mm. Wow. <laughs> farming, indeed. I think that's like Oshiherero culture. Uh -huh. yes. yeah. You have just to farm. You I'm can't. Just <laughs> um, and in terms of um, you know what you're reading, I'm curious mm. because my colleague, Michelin, actually she was just here. I think she mm. wanted to meet you because I saw her at the door. <laughs> oh, okay. uh, but I feel like you two would get on like this. <laughs> really? um, yes. Okay. Uh, but she's also very spiritual and she's okay. a reader. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that there are listeners who are also very spiritual and they're mm. readers. Mm -hmm. So what are you reading? What books would you recommend? I would recommend 
any book by Cindy Trim. Mm. She's mm. amazing. She's a doctor. She's from the U.S., but she is just out of this world. Mm-hmm. And Miles, Dr. Miles, Franklin Miles, very good. Okay. Um, those two are probably my favorite. Okay. And most recently, I got a book um, by Nikki Bush, How to Manage Work-Life Balance. Mm. Mm. But I only started it now. I haven't actually gone into it in detail. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, there's a lot of books that you can read. Um, luckily, there's online now. Yeah. Um, I'm so blessed for some reason, um, if people give me gifts, it's books. So <laughs> I don't know when last I actually bought a book for oh, myself wow. because okay. I will I'll look for it and f- randomly the book that I'm l- looking for, somebody will just buy it for me. That's mm. really nice. What wow. is this? So, <laughs> it's divine into me. Yes. No, really. <laughs> I love, I love. But I'll, I'll, I'll be more than happy to chat to us about some of the books. Yes. No, that would be fantastic. Mitchell, did yeah. you hear that? Jacqueline, <laughs> is, she wants to meet you Wait too. outside of the door. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then yes. as, as we wind down our interview, Jackie, um, I think another interesting thing that we'd like to ask you is, if by some, you know, divine intervention, some sort of uh, magical scenario, you have the power of the universe in your hand, right? Mm. Uh, what would you change for the better of society? Well, it's <laughs> quite amazing. I think I'll make sure that no one goes to to bed um, on a uh, on an empty stomach, mm. you know. Because we take that for granted. Um, there are people that really cannot survive on, um, on, on bare minimum, you know, people that are starving. Mm. And for me, that's probably one of the basic needs an, a person has. So if you can't eat, you can't function as mm. a human being. Mm. So for me, that would be to, to make a difference in terms of whether it's feeding programs or whatever, I will just make sure that nobody is hungry. Mm. Yeah. That's well, beautiful. that's beautiful. Yeah. And Jacqueline, it's been beautiful talking to you this morning. <laughs> you. Um, I wish we could talk to you all morning. Mm. But you yeah. know what? There will be time to sit down, have a coffee and just have yeah. a chat. But it's been lovely having you in studio Thank this morning. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. And um, I know I've been postponing this for ages. So, <laughs> yes, I'm so happy to be here. And I'll make a turn some other time again. It's actually nice in studio. Definitely. <laughs> you're, you're part of the Desert Radio family yes. now. <laughs> And Love it. Cool. <laughs> that Thank was, you. of course, Bank Vinduk's Executive Officer of Marketing and Corporate Communication Services at Jacqueline Pack, just talking to us a little bit about who she is, you know, how she got started in uh, the corporate uh, and marketing environment.